What are my options if my baby is breech or transverse? Babies that are lying with their bottom or their feet first in the uterus, the womb, instead of in the usual head first position, are called breech babies. And if they're lying across the womb, it's known as transverse. Now, babies ideally need to be head down for birth, but being breech or transverse is pretty common. The vast majority of babies will turn into the head down position by around 36 weeks of pregnancy because only three to four percent of babies actually stay breech at the time of delivery. So if you've been told that your baby isn't in the perfect position, it can be a bit of a surprise. So let's jump in and chat about everything that you need to know. I am Brooke. I'm an obstetrics and gynecology doctor. So the first question, why is my baby breech? Well, in the vast majority of situations, it's just down to chance as to whether your baby is going to turn around. However, there are some situations that make having a breech presentation more likely. For example, if it is your first pregnancy, if you have a low lying placenta, also known as placenta previa, if you have too much or too little fluid, the amniotic fluid around your baby, or if you have more than one baby, if you have an unusual shape to your uterus, you've been told that you've got, for example, a heart-shaped uterus. It might be interesting to know that in 10% of cases, the next baby that you have also comes down in the breech position. So why does it matter? Well, it's important to be aware in advance if your baby is breech because it affects your options for birth. There are risks associated with giving birth vaginally if your baby is breech, as it increases the neonatal mortality. Now, these numbers are very small, but they are significant. And therefore, if your baby is breech, your doctor will want to have a full discussion of your options. What are your options? Well, if your baby is breech or transverse at 36 weeks of pregnancy, your healthcare professional will discuss the following options with you. Firstly, trying to turn your baby in the uterus into the head first position by something called an external cephalic version, ECV. The other option is having a planned cesarean section or having a planned vaginal breech birth. Now, it's important to note that if your baby is transverse at 36 weeks, your doctor might recommend that you should be admitted to hospital until your baby can either be turned or be delivered. Now, this is because if your waters break with your baby in that transverse position, it can sometimes mean that the umbilical cord can drop out, known as cord prolapse. And this can be dangerous to the baby. And in that situation, it's better to have been in hospital if your waters break than being at home because we can very quickly deliver your baby by cesarean section. So can you turn your baby by any other means? Well, there's no scientific evidence that lying down or sitting in a particular position can help your baby to turn. However, I don't believe that there is any harm in trying. And there's a website called Spinning Babies, which might have some useful ideas for you. There's also some evidence that the use of moxibustion, which is burning a Chinese herb called mugwort at 33 to 35 weeks of pregnancy, might help your baby to turn into the head first position. This may possibly be because it encourages your baby's movements more. Either way, it should be performed under the direction of a registered healthcare practitioner. However, Ultimately, you might want to try something a little bit more reliable, namely ECV, external cephalic version. Now, this is a technique that involves applying a gentle but firm pressure on your abdomen to help your baby to turn in the uterus so that they lie head first. It's successful in around 50% of cases or 60% if you have had a baby before. There are some factors that can help your doctor to determine if this process is likely to be successful for you. For example, the exact position and the weight of your baby, the position of your placenta and the amount of fluid that's sitting around your baby. Now, ECV is usually performed after 36 to 37 weeks of pregnancy. However, it can actually be performed right up until the early stages of labour. So the procedure itself begins with monitoring of the baby and relaxing the muscle of your uterus using medication such as tubutylene. And this makes it easier for us to turn your baby. This medication is often given by injection just before the ECV and it's safe for both you and your baby. It could make you feel a little bit flushed. You might become aware of your heart beating a bit faster, but it's usually only for a short time. Before the ECV, you'll have an ultrasound scan to confirm that your baby is still breech or transverse and to check your pulse and your blood pressure. You'll have an ultrasound scan also after the ECV to check whether your baby has successfully turned. Your baby's heart rate will also be monitored by CTG before and after the procedure. Sometimes after the procedure, you could have any bleeding or you could have some abdominal pain, contractions or reduced movements. If you're at home already, you should definitely get in touch urgently with the hospital. And if you do have any of these things or if there are concerns on your baby's heart trace, 
your doctor may recommend urgent delivery of your baby because one of the downsides of the risks of this procedure there's a small chance it could cause something called an abruption and the treatment for that is urgent delivery of your baby by cesarean section the ecv itself can be uncomfortable and occasionally it can be painful but your healthcare professional will stop if you're experiencing any pain and the procedure will only last for a few minutes but remember that you are in control the whole time if you're not liking it if it feels really painful or just something's not right tell them to stop and they should stop immediately and if your healthcare professional is unsuccessful at their first attempt in trying to turn the baby then if you agree so with your consent they might try again and they might give it a couple of goes to see if they can get the baby to turn around and after the procedure if it is successful only three percent of babies will then revert back to the breech position so once your baby is turned into the head first position you'll be more likely to have a successful vaginal birth and successful ecv lowers your chances of needing a cesarean section and all the associated risks of that if your blood type is rhesus d negative you'll be advised that you should have an anti-d injection after the ecv and you should also have a blood test so are there any risks well ecv is generally safe it's got a very low complication rate overall there does not appear to be an increased risk to your baby from having an ecv after that ecv has been performed you'll be normally able to go home the same day when you do go into labor your chances of needing an emergency cesarean section forceps or a vacuum so the suction cup birth is slightly higher than if your baby had always been in the head down position immediately after the ecv there is a one in 200 chance of you needing an emergency cesarean section as i mentioned earlier it can happen because of bleeding from the placenta or any changes or concerns in your baby's heartbeat meaning the doctors feel that an emergency delivery would be the best thing to do even if you have had one cesarean section before we can usually do an ecv if that's something that you would like but an ECV should not be done if you do need a cesarean section because of other reasons affecting your pregnancy, like a placenta previa, or if you've recently experienced some vaginal bleeding, or if your waters have broken, if you have a multiple pregnancy. So what if you decline ECV or you have one, but it's not successful? Having an ECV is absolutely a personal choice. And it's important to know it's not your only option. Either way, you should plan delivery if you don't want an ECV or if it's not successful. And you can weigh up your options. You can usually decide between having a vaginal breech delivery or a planned cesarean section, which would usually take place around 39 weeks. The main reason that most babies in the UK that are breech are born by cesarean section was as a result of the term breech trial. This was published in the year 2000 and it analysed 2,088 women at 121 centres in 26 countries. And their results concluded that planned cesarean section significantly reduced neonatal mortality compared to vaginal breech delivery. And this led to many of the units completely stopping all vaginal breech births. So younger doctors actually haven't had as much exposure or training in the techniques for vaginal breech birth since then. Since then, there has been a bit of criticism of that trial as there are a number of factors that could have skewed the results. For example, the women that were having planned breech vaginal deliveries did not necessarily receive electronic fetal monitoring or they didn't always have a senior obstetrician present. And therefore, in our current RCOG guidance, it advises a discussion of all of the risks with the doctor, but you can actually consider either option for delivery. A caesarean section is moderately safer for the baby, but it has important risks for the mother and there are potential impacts on future pregnancy and births. I have a separate video that you can watch for a full rundown on what to expect if you choose to have a caesarean section for your breech baby. So we don't need to have a full discussion of that here. But if after the discussion with your healthcare professional, you decide that you actually want to choose to have a vaginal breech birth, if you choose this option, then you should be cared for by a team who are trained in helping women to have breech babies vaginally. And you should expect to have a hospital birth where if needed, you can have an emergency cesarean section. It's four in 10 or 40% of women planning a vaginal breech birth do eventually need a cesarean section. Induction of labor is not usually recommended. And while a successful vaginal birth carries the least risks for you compared to a cesarean section, there is more concern about the risks to your baby, namely the very small chance of your baby dying around the time of delivery. So your individual risks should be discussed with you by your healthcare team. 
And before choosing a vaginal breech birth, it is advised that you and your baby should be assessed by a healthcare professional. And they might advise against you having a vaginal breech birth if your baby is a footling breech, meaning that one or both of your baby's feet are below its bottom, or if your baby is larger or smaller than average, if your baby is in a certain position, for example, if the neck of the baby is very tilted back, so it's hyperextended, or if you have a low-lying placenta, placenta previa, if you have preeclampsia, or you've got any other significant pregnancy problems, then having a vaginal breech birth is most likely not a good choice for you. So what can you expect when you're in labour with a breech baby? Well, you should usually have continuous CTG monitoring during labour, as this has been shown to improve your baby's chance of having a good outcome. And with a breech baby, you have the same choices for pain relief as you have with a baby who is in the head first position. However, whatever you choose, a calm atmosphere with continuous support in labour should be provided. And you might prefer to be in an all fours position or you prefer to lie propped up on your back. In some circumstances, for example, if there are concerns about your baby's heart rate or if your labour is not progressing as we expect it to, you may need an emergency caesarean section during labour. A paediatrician who's a doctor who specialises in the care of babies will attend the birth to check that your baby is doing well. And apart from this, we'll usually try to avoid intervening in your labour as much as possible. So you've got the best chances of a breech vaginal birth if you have a hands-off or just supportive breech delivery. Doctors or midwives will be very close by so that they can assist in the birth of your baby. But there is also a lot of waiting around as we wait for your contractions to help the baby to descend. And sometimes the baby's buttocks and legs will be delivered. And we'll usually leave the baby hanging to allow gravity to assist. We're obviously right there so the baby cannot drop out, but ultimately we try to let nature do its thing as much as possible. As I mentioned earlier, there is still the possibility of your baby needing a cesarean section if your labour doesn't progress or if there is any concerns about your baby's well-being. If your vaginal breech birth is successful, there is also the chance of perineal tears like any other vaginal birth, but it's likely that the recovery from a vaginal birth will be quicker than a cesarean section. If you want to know more about recovering from birth, I have got separate videos on that. So ultimately, these choices are complicated and the evidence and guidance is definitely confusing. The most important thing is you get a personalised discussion about the things that matter in your case for you and your baby to help you to make your choices and to plan your baby's birth. So let me know if you've got any other questions below.